Okay, we all know the benefits and value of using Mode 6 information to help us diagnose and repair various non-continuous monitors. That's part of OBD2. A lot of times you might have a question, however, do all cars support it? The answer to that question is 100% if you know where to look. So in certain car manufacturers, Mode 6 might be supported on the factory side. However, on all car manufacturers, if I go in and select diagnose on my scan tool, and instead of telling it the type of car I'm working on, if I go to just the generic OBD2 section, select the latest version that's available for me, I will find all 10 modes of operation of OBD2 on the generic side. So it's gonna come up, it's gonna ask me, do I wanna select the access mode? Yes for quick mode, no for scanning mode. We're gonna select no, you can select yes to save time. If I select no, it's going to go ahead and try to talk to all the OBD2 different protocols. So we see that we've got a match on the very first one which is ISO CAN bus US protocol. It's going to go through and it, the other ones are all gonna select failed because it can't communicate on that particular network. Once it's done trying to talk to each one of the networks, I'm gonna select the one that says matched and we're gonna come up with the screen that's gonna give me access to the 10 different modes of OBD2, which are standardized throughout all the car lines. So from this point here, the one that said match if I hit the little arrow buttons, it's going to start communicating and you'll notice that it automatically pulls up the VIN number of the vehicle you're working on. I can scroll on up, tells you stuff about what type of ignition system it has, all that kind of stuff. If I'm good with all that, if it matches a car I'm working on, if I select the OK button, I now get the screen that I can go ahead and select any one of the 10 modes of, of operation of OBD2. Notice I've got in parentheses where it actually lists what they actually are. So in mode six, it's the test results for onboard monitoring tests, which are all the non-continuous monitors. If I were to select that, it comes up and it gives me the screenshot of all the mode six data that's available to me to help me diagnose whatever car I happen to be working on. So not really trying to show you exactly everything about mode six at this point. It's more important that we know how to access it with the scan tool at our disposal. And then once we have it accessed, you can see stuff like misfire data is clearly listed out there. If the car is, happens to be an older type of vehicle, EGR monitor stuff would be very beneficial. Even some of the newer Chrysler products, for instance, are starting to use EGR valves with EGR coolers on them again. So. Anything here that's going to help us diagnose the vehicle, including even, even some of the O2 sensors. So stuff along the lines of CAT monitors and also O2 monitors themselves will be readily displayed. And as a technician, I can go through, diagnose the EVAP, everything that has to do with the non-continuous monitor test results. And again, just as a quick value here, it's going to tell me if it's passed or failed the test. I can select the details for any one of these that I happen to highlight at the time. So I'm just gonna highlight catalyst monitor. And if I highlighted one of them and push the button, it tells me what the minimum and maximum values were and what the overall end result happens to be. This, if you use this particular function of your scan tool along with modes nine and mode two, this can also help you diagnose why you might have a monitor that's not running or resetting after you've gone ahead and cleared some diagnostic trouble codes.